So my name is Larry Hopkins, and I've been an Arturia Sound developer for many years, almost from the very beginning, part of a wonderful team. I was one of the original programmers uh, back in the 80s to be able to do FM synthesis for multiple companies, including Yamaha. I still have a lot of my original FM synths here. I started in music and sound at a very early age. So one of the things that FM synthesis was able to do, and particularly DS7s, were to make a very crispy, hard razor attack uh, bass sound. And this is certainly one of them. When I got to the new Arturia plugin, I started to dive into it with as much fury as I did the original DS7. It was so much fun to go back and come full circle, but now it had so many visual feedback um, areas and all the parameters that graphic envelopes has a building oscilloscope. A modulation matrix has a four bus effects and things like that. It really makes it better than the original unit and easier to program. This particular track, I have this electric piano. That's a, a one of the Yamaha DS7 uh, Arturia sounds in my collection. The Arturia plugins ha have the, the true nature of the original units. I have my hands on the original units, and I've had my hands on the Arturia plugins, and the CS80 sounds like a CS80. The ARP 2600 sounds like an ARP 2600. Now I have polyphony on my Arturia ARP 2600, and I can save thousands of patches and recall them extremely easily. So that's certainly one of the biggest advantages of them. You know, when I got down to really using most of the Arturia plugins, you know, I said, you know, I'm going to spend that money on a great mic cabinet and just use the Arturias instead because they're that spot on. Well, nowadays with the current technology that we're using, I can draw from acoustic sources, electronic sources, uh, plugins, and all kinds of uh, plug-in effects, plug-in instruments, and combine them into one sound. And that's one of the ways I do it, to get be able to get something that's new and sonically uh, outrageous in, in some ways. It's good to know the standard recording techniques, but to also understand the creative possibilities about what you can do. Let's go to a sound that DS was always famous for, like a bell tone. I'm going to put the mog wheel up. And now we have chorusing. And with the chorusing, it gets huge. One thing I always try to do when I'm designing a sound is to make sure it's not stagnant, that it has lots of controller movement and it has the ability to morph from one thing to another and the player can use his imagination and get a variety of sounds out of one instrument. So this is the, uh, the, the layering of Arturia piano, analog string, Fender wrote and two instances of electric pianos uh, that are from the DS7. The technology in the hands of a knowledgeable, creative musician now can bring sound to an absolutely new level. Uh, in my new studio, you know, it probably would have cost in the 1980s maybe a couple million dollars to uh, put something like that together. And now I'm doing it at a fraction of the cost. 
including making wonderful sounds on the Arturia plugins.